follow us on social media and please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any updates from our ALS experts. Please, everybody, bring your heart and soul every two weeks because you can see we have new people. We have people who have been with us quite a while. We are an extended family and we're here to support each other. So welcome to this evening. Lisa, it is all yours. Thanks, McFinn. Welcome everyone to our Wednesday webinar series and thank you so much for joining us. So tonight we are here because each member of our team has been affected by ALS. So we volunteer our time and our energy to make a difference. Our organization was created by people, people who aren't just accomplished professionals or loving brothers, sisters, wives, husbands, sons, daughters, friends, but were people who were caregivers and patients, all touched by this disease when it walked into our lives. Our team created this organization simply because we wanted to give those going through the journey and the challenges of ALS, what we didn't have while we were going through it ourselves. We asked ourselves a real simple question. What is it that we wished we had? So tonight we're gonna show you exactly what everything ALS is doing to accelerate treatments. We're also here because we wanna be the force that will change the face of ALS. This is our commitment to ourselves and to everyone here. Our webinar will show you exactly what it is we do and you'll get to meet the people behind it. Our stellar team will show you ways that you can get involved because we can't do this alone. No single person or organization can tackle ALS, but together as a community and advocates, we can do this. So we wanna hear from you. How can we be of assistance to you? Please stay for our 20 minute presentation that will be followed by audience Q&A and we really want this to be interactive. So together we can help solve the challenges that ALS brings. Also feel free to ask any of our team members um, questions. So now I'd like to introduce our fierce leader and the founder and CEO of Everything ALS, Indu Navar. Well, thank you, Lisa. And um, thank you everybody for joining us today. So I'm Indu Navar. I started, you know, I came to this journey because I lost my husband actually um, in 2019, two days from now, that is August 13th. So this has been a two year journey. Um, and when we all got together, we asked the uh, question on, what is that that we wish we had, like Lisa said? And this is like the best team that I've worked with. So um, with that, I will start sharing my screen right now and we'll go through what does everything ALS do beyond you know, the webinars that we have where we meet you every two weeks because we have been working around the clock on other aspects of bringing treatments to market. So we wanna tell you what are the underlying pinnings that we are working on. When we first started, you know, the organization, we said, what do we wanna stand for? We said, it needs to be from care to cure. That is, um, I know it takes a few minutes to come up, but, um, you know, it, there are a lot of things that we do that are organizations just focused on care or just focused on cure. And what we need is really, we need to bring the caring that is all of the patients, the community together. We need to actually work together with the people who are working on the cure. It cannot be in the silo. And that was our approach. And that is what we have um, accomplished in the last um, you know, little over one year is when we all joined hands. So our first webinar was May of 2020. And I think we, we all got together. Each one of us met each other uh, in uh, walks of our ALS journey and some are family members and friends and we'll, you'll meet each one of us. And um, most of us actually had met only online and we had not seen each other when we got together. And this was... Um, about um, June of 2021, we all got together. And that was like over a year, we've all been together, but it was really interesting when we all physically met for the first time, mm -hmm. we knew we were family. Because just like how we feel with you guys, like every 
two weeks, we, we just instantly, there was this thing of other than, you know, oh my God, I didn't know you were this short or, you know, I didn't know you had short hair or I thought you had longer hair. Uh, as soon as that conversation was done, we were just like, you know, together. We knew we were connected. We were, you know, there is something higher than ourselves has brought us together to actually work on this mission. And, and you know, our, our mission is actually three pillars. And uh, when we say, you know, three pillars, like I said, it's a care to cure. Um, the three pillars are uh, advocacy. What, what do we mean by advocacy is really understanding each one of the patient's journey. And as we have gone through it, you know, I was a caregiver for my husband and we went through two and a half years of not knowing what it is and few years of, you know, trying all the clinical trials. And so each one of us where we'll go through, uh, you know, what we have brought, we said, you know, we've learned so much through this journey and what can we bring? So our advocacy is really caring for patients and patients' family. And, and from that, we have research, as you have seen, probably, you know, we send out emails about come and join our speech study, you know, it, it, we'll talk a little bit about what does that mean. So we kick off research, uh, which is, um, you know, what we call it citizen led research, that is, we as patient and patient advocacy group are creating this research platform. And we invite the researchers to come in and look at the data and um, do the findings. So that way we are accelerating many, many researchers having the access to the data as opposed to doing it single file, which take, what takes usually two to three years, we have been able to do it in six to eight months. And, and our goal is to bring treatments to market. So how are we doing that? Our research is really focused on uh, biomarkers. What I mean by biomarkers is really figuring out, you know, um, what we measure today, you know, what we say ALS FRS score, which most of you are aware of, it's a pen and paper, and there's a bunch of questions. And, um, and that was what we want to replace by calling it biomarkers. What is what that means is, if we continuously monitor digitally, we will be able to bring those things to clinical trials. And then when we, we're in the clinical trials, we'll be able to actually measure changes in the effectiveness of the drug that might not be significant where you can show in your pen and paper ALS FRS score as much as when you're doing continuous monitoring. What if the drug really did help 10 or 20 percent uh, of um, certain function that was not captured? So that's what we're trying to bring is these continuous monitoring of our um, is very, very important. And those biomarkers are very important. And we know the fact that if there's a biomarker, there's a seven times more chances of that clinical trial being successful. So that's what we're trying to change. And, um, and like I said, how do we plan on unlocking and accelerating these, what we call biomarker is traditional studies are done, um, you know, single researcher actually gets a grant and they actually go out and recruit patients to bring in the data. And that data is not shared with anybody else. So what happens is it becomes slow and expensive and it's a two to three years to study, say for example, you know, about 50 patients to bring data from about 50 participants. And what we have done is from everything ALS, uh, open data platform, we actually bring in many people and then that data is analyzed by many researchers simultaneously. That is 20X faster and 50X cost effective because we are able to take that data and share it among many, many researchers simultaneously. And we'll tell you what we've accomplished in um, the shortest amount of time today, what we have has never been accomplished in ALS before. So what we have accomplished in the last 12 months has been something that, uh, uh, you know, the community has not seen so much data before. So we feel very uh, uh, honored that we are part of this and we're able to actually move the needle and we wanna do more of that. And this is our team. Our team is very diverse. And you you see a lot of the people uh, uh, once in a while. Uh, we have our patient advocacy group, which you know who work with the participants, uh, who work with the patient community, and our webinars. 
And then we have research and regulatory group. That is, we have uh, Dr. Arya Anwar, uh, who is also our principal investigator. He couldn't be here today because the COVID cases are going up and he had to be in the hospital today. And you, you guys have met our medical student who is Sarah Diaz. And also wanted to say, you know, Janice Hogan, she's actually an attorney with 25 years of experience bringing products to market with FDA and her uncle passed away from ALA. So we're very honored to have diverse group of people here. And also we have technology and commercialization and you meet, you'll meet some of these people uh, today. And um, so really we, are, we brought this diverse group all working together to actually develop this uh, biomarker discovery. And with that, I will actually invite our team who is here to just introduce themselves and say why you know, they joined Everything ALS and why we're doing ourselves. So I'm gonna stop sharing the slide as we go through the intro of our team. Lisa, do you wanna kick it off? Oh, wow, okay. Hi everyone, um, I'm Lisa Deegan. And um, the reason I got involved with Everything ALS is um, my younger brother, John, got diagnosed in 2014. He was only 44 years old. And his doctor basically had said, well, get your affairs in order. And there wasn't a sense of hope of what was, you know, maybe a treatment or a trial. So um, he did stem cell. <laughs> And uh, it, it, it didn't work, we, and he passed away, but we are, have been um, energized um, by everything ALS, and it gave me a reason to continue to help others. Since I watched his journey, which was, which was really tough, but I kind of turned that into um, energy towards uh, making a difference for others. So uh, I love and I'm inspired by the people who work day and night, whether it be the neurologists, the patients, caregivers, um, Indu, our team, everybody works so hard. So I'm inspired by that and it makes me want to work harder. So, and I do this to, obviously to honor uh, my brother because he was a great great human being. And um, the roles that I do at Everything ALS is I get speakers for our webinars and I do all the social media, I provide content on five different platforms. And um, I'm also doing a podcast, co-hosting it with my teammate, McFinn Levere. And um, so we'll talk more about that later on in the presentation, but that's it in a nutshell. So nice to see you all. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. My name is McFinn LeVere, and the reason that I joined Everything ALS is because I had ALS, and they told me that I only had 18 months to get my affairs in order. Well, 25 months later, I came back alive. So I'm here because hope is alive, and I am hopeful that I can be of service to each of you because I know what 24 hour a day care is. I know what it feels like to be isolated. I know what it feels like to be told that you are going to pass away from this world. So for me to have conquered that, Dr. Bedlack named me his 42nd ALS reversal. And for that, all I can say is I'm here, I have a purpose and you all are a big part of it. So thank you for letting me into your life. I guess and it I'll looks go like next. we got froze. I'll, I'll go next. Hi guys, my name's Sarah. Um, I joined the Everything ALS team because of my dad. Uh, he was diagnosed in 2016 and um, unfortunately uh, passed away in 2018, but it's because of him and being able to celebrate his life that I have joined this team and am putting uh, hopefully my, my expertise and, and my future by going back to school um, and working in this uh, field to accelerate and be a, a part of moving that needle and being the change. So this is all in celebration of Dan Diaz. Thank you, Sarah. Dave? Yes, I'm Dave Warnock, and I got involved with Everything ALS because I have ALS currently. And I was diagnosed in February, February 19, February 26, 2019, sorry. So it's been a little over two years, two and a half years. And I um, 
I was frustrated in the ALS community uh, not being able to get information and the information I was getting was frustrating because as you, as many of you know, uh, and, and Grandpa, you were mentioning it, your, your, your symptoms sounded just like mine. And I couldn't, uh, the diagnosis was hard to get. And, and once, so when I, when I learned what a, everything LS was doing, I was all in because the, the people behind it, Indu and everyone else was, was trying a different way to get these biomarkers so that we could get research in, in ways that could uh, improve diagnosis, get it quicker, get treatment quicker and, and change the way that things happen in, in, with ALS. And my, uh, so I've, I've been inspired to be a part of this team. Uh, the people, especially the people who've lost people to ALS and continue to fight day and night against this disease just really inspire me. So I'm, I'm moved and thankful to be a part of this team. My role at this point is to, is to focus on the speech study Patika, 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 patika. If you don't know what that is, then you need to learn because that's part of the speech study and we need all we can get in there. That's going to help us get the biomarkers. And so I'm involved with recruiting and, and re retaining the speech study uh, participants. So if you're not involved with that, please uh, get, get to the website, get signed up and, and, and add your, add your name to the list. Bevan? Uh, um, I'm Bevan Jett and I'm Dave's cows, I guess is what you would call it, uh, my partner. Um, I became aware of everything ALS basically because of the bi-monthly or every other Wednesday um, seminars in which they have leading experts um, give presentations on what's currently going on um, with ALS, with ALS research. And um, afterwards, there's an open Q&A. And um, for all the people that are cows, I, I can imagine how frustrating um, I know I was very frustrated because I kept trying to find information and I, I was getting mixed messages, couldn't get the neurologist, couldn't get an appointment with the neurologist, felt like I had no one to talk to. And yet here we were dealing with a pretty, pretty significant um, serious diagnosis. So um, for that, um, I think everything ALS is just wonderful in, in being able to provide that direct one-on-one -on -one, um, ability to talk to the experts for that. Um, but, you know, this, Two years ago, I was really excited, though, because in all the research I was personally doing, it just seemed like we had these drugs that were coming online, you know, that that were in phase three trials and that we would be able to get. And yet it's two years later and nothing, nothing's been approved. And the real problem, if you really look at the um, research, is that we don't have the right kind of data to get this approved by the FDA. And we can complain and fuss all we want, but if we don't have what we need to show that something's actually working, you know, what are we gonna do? So that's why the biomarkers are just really critical. And that's what everything ALS is really focused on, which they'll explain later in this. And that is getting these biomarkers, making them available for everyone to use in their own studies so that um, we can, finally get something approved and out to patients. We're glad to be here. Deb? Hi there, everyone. Uh, my name is Deb Fabricator. And I just wanted to, before I tell you about myself, I just wanted to mention that most of the original co-founders of Everything ALS lost someone they loved to ALS, but my brother, John, he died in 2014. And the one thing that I can tell you, it's not my brother's ALS anymore. I see more things in the pipeline. I see more advocacy groups making noise. I see the needle going forward. So I just really, you know, as we're all saying, we lost our loved one, we lost this person. I wanted you to really, really know it's not my brother's ALS anymore. So my background is in education, and advocacy, politics, and fundraising. And I come to everything ALS. Um, I'm working very hard on recruitment and managing the speech project. Um, also, I helped to create and uh, am a liaison with the student ambassador program. And I uh, really work with the, all our participants and uh, maintain and collaborate with them and also with other nonprofits. Um, and sometimes I do a little editing and writing and jack of all trades, whatever uh, Indu or the team needs, I'm more than willing to do, as well as whatever our audience and participant needs. Um, 
well. So thank you for being here. Sarah, or no, you already went, Sarah. Who's next? Maybe Richard. I'll go. Yeah. Richard. <laughs> hey, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Um, in the uh, the nice picture that Indu showed, I'm one of those people where uh, where everybody was saying, "Wow, I didn't know you were so short," um, but they still have me around, so I guess I didn't make that bad an impression at the uh, at the team meeting. Um, I joined the team about five months ago, um, and my connection to to ALS is is having gone through the process or or ordeal, I guess I should say, uh, of having been misdiagnosed with the disease. Um, after a, a year of progressive symptoms, um, I was diagnosed in late 2019 and then had that diagnosis corrected to multifocal motor neuropathy in early 2020. And, you know, I wrote down some of the words my colleagues said, and, and really I, I uh, experienced and saw some of the, of the same things and the, the feeling of isolation, of hopelessness, the arduous diagnosis process, um, not being able to track down and get the right information for, for myself or for, for my family. Um, it really just opened my eyes to um, opportunities that I see as, as, as far as making progress on so many fronts. And, and Deb spoke to some of the progress that we're being, that's being made. And, 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 and I, I think that's, that's great and she's spot on, but there's still so much work to be done. And uh, so I started networking in the ALS community uh, had the good fortune of being connected to uh, to first to Deb and then to then to Indu and, and joined the team about five months ago. As I said, uh, my role in the team is is to uh, help coordinate and manage our interactions and, and potential collaborations with pharma companies. Uh, prior to this uh, uh, joining the team, I spent 18 years in the pharma industry at a company called Novo Nordisk. Um, so that's where I think I can can add the most value. Um, on the personal front, I live in the Princeton, New Jersey area, uh, married with three teenage daughters, so I don't get a lot of sleep, um, but uh, enjoy what I'm doing. And, and in, in addition to enjoy, enjoying the work that we're doing at Everything ALS, I just wanna go back to what Indu opened with and, uh, and really the sense of team and camaraderie and coming together as kindred souls. And she's exactly right when we did get together uh, for the first time, it felt like we'd been best friends for years. And um, lastly, I just want to give a shout out to uh, to Lisa's parents, who I see here on the screen under the under the under the handle Salvatore Pecoraro. <laughs> they were kind enough to uh, to host us at their beautiful home um, for that team meeting, and it was uh, it was just a great day. So, um, so I want to say hi to them. Thank you. How sweet, Sylvia. Sylvia. Um... Why did I join Everything ALS? Because of you, Indu. Uh, I'm a Silicon Valley high-tech publicist, and I work for Indu's uh, company, the company she founded called Cirrus about 20 years ago. I hadn't heard from her for about 20 years, and when she called me up and spent three hours on the phone telling me her whole story, I immediately said, yes, I'll join your team. And I am so glad I did. Um, Indu, I've, I've worked with high-tech luminaries, you know, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, to drop a few names. But I've got to say that Indu has the drive, the passion, and a vision combined with the experience to carry out whatever she wants to achieve. And if anyone can find a cure for this disease, this team will. Um, my role is a media communicator. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. And a good one. <laughs> yeah, I, I can go next. Yes. Um, yeah, hey everybody. Uh, my name is Neil Olson and uh, I've got a background in physics and engineering. I uh, used to work on flight control systems for rockets, but um, my ALS journey started in 2019. My dad was diagnosed with uh, bull bar ALS, and um, my family knew immediately when he was diagnosed, uh, we wanted to, to fight it as hard as we could. So um, he did clinical trials, uh, he did a lot of off-label treatments, and uh, despite all that, he, he passed away uh, in January 2021. And that really, well, first off, it was the hardest two years of my life, but 
it had me wondering like, what can I do to, to give back to the ALS community and use what I've learned. And also I have, um, I have my technical skills. So how can I essentially leverage the best of human technology to better solve problems like, uh, like ALS? So that's, that's a little bit about me. Thanks. Thank you. And as you've seen, you know, um, the team, when we say diverse, we'll talk about, you know, some people had questions about, what about the researchers? Are they as diverse? Yes, they are. So what we'll do is we'll just get a little bit more technical about what we do. And Neil will walk us through a couple of slides and I'll talk about the whole data platform that we're building. And of course, we'll leave a lot through the, for the Q&A um, session so we can go as deep as you want. And we wanted to make sure that we cover some parts of it here. And let me bring up the slides. Um, Okay, take it away, Neil. All right, thanks, Indu. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 sorry, wrong. Yeah, so um, what I wanna talk about is uh, just expanding on what Indu was talking earlier uh, on, which was uh, digital biomarkers. Um, it's something that our team is very excited about and really, we're looking for ways to accelerate both the clinical trial process, uh, as well as do things like uh, help diagnose people earlier so they have a better shot at those drugs working. And a lot of you may be familiar with the ALS FRS. Um, it's been used for a lot of years uh, as kind of the, the gold clinical standard for uh, determining therapeutic efficacy. But the ALS FRS has quite a few problems. And one of them is that the changes uh, in ALS FRS take, take place over a long period of time. So um, because uh, on average people or ALS patients lose about a point a month, that means to get or to prove statistical significance for a new therapeutic, usually it takes six months, 12 months, uh, a very long time for those trials to complete. And that just makes the whole process of finding new drugs very, very slow. So what we want to do is we want to try to shorten the time frame for those trials, um, maybe to three, six months, or however, however short we can make the process. And one way we think we might be able to do that is by using uh, quantitative hard metrics um, based around uh, data that's collected directly from the body. And so we want to use mostly sensor-based devices, among other things. So think about smartwatches as being kind of a consumer-facing example of this, but um, there are dozens of devices that can measure uh, different parameters about the body that we could potentially use for, for determining efficacy. And really, uh, this wouldn't have been possible, say, 10 years ago. Um, a lot of these devices have gotten small enough and easy enough to use that um, it's actually reasonable for people to, to use them. Uh, also, algorithms have gotten significantly better to the point where um, we can find um, very subtle signals uh, in, in data from, uh, from wearable devices. Uh, next slide, please. So um, anyways, we we're looking to uh, augment the ALS FRS at least, uh, but we think that uh, a lot of these sensors could replace uh, parts of the ALS FRS. So like I mentioned, uh, the body's generating a pretty tremendous amount of data. And because ALS is a muscle wasting disease, uh, motion is obviously a very big part of overall quality of life. Um, so using camera-based systems, uh, using accelerometers and gyroscopes, um, on wearable devices, uh, we can, with high, very high fidelity, track uh, a patient's, patient's motion and see um, how well they're moving. So take a look at things like range of motion, um, their gait and gait fluidity. Um, so over there on the left, I have a few other examples of um, things that we could look at, but how much force do you exert on, on objects? Um, and thinking about the ALS FRS, uh, there are kind of four broad uh, categories, but um, there are a lot of things that we can measure, especially in gross motor, which is how your, how your limbs are moving, um, respiratory, uh, we can use, say, handheld spirometers, 
uh, or um, even use modalities like microphones to determine uh, how well you're breathing. Um, and then fine motor, we can look at say like the movement of your fingers, the amount of force that uh, your fingers can exert. And all of those things are hard metrics that we could potentially use uh, in lieu of ALS FRS to better determine like, are you getting stronger? Where are you getting stronger, uh, et cetera. So this is something we're excited about. And like I said earlier, we wanna make trials shorter and we wanna get earlier diagnoses. So our speech project is one example of, uh, of these technologies where we're looking at uh, the movement of the face and the sound of the voice to determine what does an ALS patient's speech look like and sound like, and can we get an algorithm to, um, I guess, determine if a person might have ALS or where in, I guess, the, um, the progression of their speech are they? Um, so that's a little bit about that, but uh, thank you all. Thank you. And, and we do all of these things not in isolation. We're, we're, we're really fortunate that we are surrounded by um, ad academics and also the neurologists with domain expertise who work with us. And you know the, what we bring to the table is our experience of technology, entrepreneurship, we're hungry, we wanna fix this, and we take the knowledge and wisdom that exists in the community and really marrying those two is what we've been able to do. And some of the names that you actually you know, recognize from uh, you know, uh, MIT, Mass General, uh, Roche, uh, who is AI Center of Excellence or IBM Research, Microsoft Research, and some of the, you know, these people work with us day in and day out on our projects. And, um, what we're really building is, I know it's, a, it's, it's really a busy chart, but I promise you this will be probably one of the last ones with a lot of engineering minded me. This is what I understand is, you know, if you really see, you know, what we're doing on the right hand side is when we say patient mediated data is we, 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 are, a, we are citizen science. That is we as patient advocacy group is creating the research. I mean, in, in um, ALS, it's never been done before. And we've shown that what we've been able to do in a short amount of time, we have the power to actually move it forward where we collect the data from the advocacy and then we actually provide it to the researcher and the AI community. And we work with AI startups like Neil mentioned, there are many, many startups with sensors, but they don't get to market in the disease, uh, especially with ALS, because they need ALS specific data. And, you know, so that's what we're able to provide to them and create this, what we call open data platform. And once we have a very early indication of biomarkers, we want the pharmaceutical company to start using it in preclinical trial in phase one to three, and we hosted a um, you know ALS roundtable inviting the pharma companies. Uh, if you go to ALSroundtable.com, you can see the um, website where we hosted on May 25th. We thought you know four or five pharma companies will attend, but we had 31 pharma companies with 71 people. Uh, who attended the event. And from that, we established really good relationship. And today, as um, Neil said, we have actually found very early indicators, very strong signals in the speech data. And everybody who is participating in the speech a project, thank you, because your effort is really valid. Right now, we're already seeing very, very strong signal. And we're going to start using that platform and that it too for, for, uh, for the clinical trial. So we're in discussion with some of the upcoming clinical trials to start using speech as one of the uh, you know, indicators of um, measurement for effectiveness of the drug. And uh, with this, you know, we're, we're also in discussion with um, FDA to start um, taking what we are uh, finding and making it FDA approved and FDA acceptable. And um, that has been very, very well received. So we're very excited to really create end to end all the way from patient researchers, you know, technologists like the AI startups to pharma companies and the FDA. And, and uh, you know, it's in the case study, right? I mean, proof is in the pudding. We're not really 
talking some vaporware here. That's what we call in a startup. When we don't have anything, we call it a vaporware. No, this is real. And we want to spend time where this is, this is reality. And we, we actually self-fund all of these projects. And you know what we did, IRB. IRB is um, uh, approval. We have to get through the approval process about what research, what data we collect, and how it's collected. And it was done August of 2020. And today, 12 months later, We've been uh, we've published our finding in American Academy of Neurology and Interspeech. We just submitted to um, MND and um, we're in discussion with FDA with this finding. When we have about 620 participants, uh, so we're very excited. And one of the things that came up with when we were showing this data to our research collaborators, um, you know, many of you know at MGH and MIT. Um, they said, wow, you know, you are actually collecting the data for 52 states, which has never been done before, because usually when you do research uh, institute, collect the data, they usually it's either East Coast or West Coast, West Coast, it's it's really uh, around where the institutes are and the diverse population of data that we collect is very, very important, especially for digital biomarkers. So we're very excited with the geography uh, uh, coverage. And with that, you know, none of this would have been possible without our student ambassadors. So what is a student ambassador? If you are in the speech study, you know what this program is. So these are, um, pre-medical and medical students who actually work with us and they actually connect with the participants and they are the first line of support and, and they've actually uh, do a lot more than just support. They actually come up with the processes, how to support and um, the, the program and also some of the dashboard, you know, how the participants should, will be looking at the data. So with that, I will um, take this opportunity to invite our student ambassadors to come in and introduce themselves. Um, they're very eager to just, you know, tell who they are. So um, please go ahead. Um, I would uh, love to invite Lily. Hi everyone, nice to meet you. My name is Lily. Um, I'm currently gonna be a junior at USC and I've been involved with everything ALS since March of last year. So this year has gone by super quick, um, but I'm so glad to be a part of it. I've learned so much and I've met so many wonderful people and everybody on this team has just been like family to me. So happy to be here. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Lily. And um, I, I just wanted to say, you know, um, when we when we started the speech project and we said, hey, we needed to get diverse student population and Lily is actually a skip rope, jump rope uh, champion. So she actually got from, you know, I don't know, 20 different uh, states people to participate. So, um, so I, Bella, I'll invite James. Hi, I'm James, everyone. I believe way back when I was recruited by Lily as well, uh, post back student at USC, started, I think, with our first Zoom meeting. I think I was uh, at the very first one, so I've been here a while. If you've also attended a lot, you'll know that I also co-moderate some of those meetings as well. Currently, uh, with everything ILS, I'm also working on another research paper with some other student ambassadors looking into the environmental effects of ALS and what research has been done and what research could be done. So we're getting close to the end of that one. I'm very excited to uh, eventually share that with everyone as well. So hello and uh, looking forward to seeing everyone else. Thank you. Sabella? Hi everybody, my name is Sabella. I'm currently a rising senior at USC. Um, I'm studying biology and computer programming and I'm on a pre-medical path. Um, I've been on this project around the same time as Lily. I started way back in uh, March of last year and wow, it's been amazing to just see um, how much we've done in such a short amount of time. And I did just wanna say I'm very honored to have the ability to work for you all and um, work with you all to help make sure that we can find a cure for this disease. So thank you everybody for having me. Thank you. Um, who else is there? Can you, Aiden? Well, Aiden Hello, sent something in the chat. Are you here, Aiden? Yes. Oh, so good. my name is Aiden, and I'm a current senior at USC. I'm studying data and cognitive sciences. I'm also in Doosan, and my stepdad was affected by ALS back two years ago. 
So I've started working with ALS, everything ALS in um, November of last year. And so far it's been wonderful working with everyone and seeing so much growth. Um, it's been a great experience and I couldn't ask for a better uh, time. Thank you. Uh, Bella? Hi, sorry, I couldn't unmute myself earlier. My name is Bella. Um, this is actually one of my first meetings I've attended, the bi-weekly meetings. So it's so great to meet all of you. I'm very grateful. Um, my family has been affected by everything, uh, by ALS. So I'm so happy to have found everything ALS. I'm very inspired and very grateful to be here. So thank you all so much. Thank you. Priscilla? Yes, hi, my name is Crisolda. Um, I joined Everything ALS last November and I'm one of the student ambassadors. Um, and it's honestly been really amazing to just get the opportunity to work with um, so many of you guys and the team as a whole. And um, really looking forward to how far we'll, we'll go with this project. Thank you. And uh, anybody else from the student? Okay. And, um, you know, um, like we said, without the students, we wouldn't have a lot of the programs uh, um, possible. So with that, um, I, I know we have got quite a few uh, slides to left. What we wanted to do is very quickly talk about the uh, dashboard, the, the we're very, very proud about, you know, the dashboard that we've come up with. So what that means is what does the dashboard mean is that any data, any part, any uh, um, data that we collect, especially in our research project, if you participate, we actually have the real-time analysis done with, um, you know, how you speak or words per minute and the loudness, and that will be shared with you. So you can actually look at your data um, along with the progression, the ALS FRS score that people have. So if you are doing any therapies, you'll be able to uh, um, look at how it uh, actually works. So with that, I'll ask Dave to actually bring it up. Dave, I'm gonna bring up the slide. It's taking a few seconds here, but um, if you can just um, talk about it, that'll be great. Yeah, the uh, being able to track the, the effect of a treatment is, is critical, is crucial. And having the the um, well, the I, I lost the name. The sorry, dashboard. the dashboard. Sorry, my I was looking at Bevan's. She was typing a comment. Um, having the dashboard available to be able to track that in real time, as as I'm like I'm right now in a clinical trial, the Healy platform trial. I just started it a couple of weeks ago, and it's it's going to be almost impossible for me to track the progress of that by using the FRS score. It's such a subjective, arbitrary measurement device that that I'm looking at. Oh, how will I how will I be able to figure out if my hands are actually working better or or working the same or working worse or am I stronger in this area or that area? And and having a a, a dashboard where I, all my data will be compiled in real time is just going to be it's just going to be a game changer. And so those of us who are living with this and looking at, at any possibility of something helping us, some kind of a treatment help us, especially if we get in trials or we're taking some, some medications or taking some supplements or something. Any, as, you, as you guys know, we'll try anything, right? Uh, and, but we don't have any way of knowing if it's working. And so having this dashboard available is just gonna be such, such an important element. And I'm just so, so excited about that, actually. Thank you, Dave. And we can talk about more about any questions you have. Um, Lisa, do you want to talk about the podcast next? Sure. I will. Nick Finn is actually going to do that. Yeah, please. Yeah. Bring up that slide for us. It's, oh, uh, is the slide not up? No. 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 Oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> I didn't see it. Huh. I, I thought I was sharing it. Sorry. I, I guess That's I got okay. it. Up. We got to look at you, though. That was nice. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Now I empathize with all the speakers we bring, right? So it's- uh... Right. So folks, Stories and Innovations in ALS is a podcast Lisa Deegan and myself, McFinn Levere, make available to the ALS community to share PAL stories and cover the latest progress in the challenge to find the cure. If you or someone 
with a startup company that has an ALS research project that needs to be heard, you could contact us at info at everythingals.org. We do have a library. So come to our website. Our podcasts will be uh, up there shortly. We're working on it. But our podcasts are to bring you everything that we've learned and everything that everyone that we have come in contact has learned. So join us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, social media. So um, we are on almost every platform you can imagine. I even post in Reddit every time I post on all of these platforms. So if you just want a private group, um, you can join us on Facebook. We also have a public page and you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, and um, I will post all of those um, of where you can go to join us in the mm -hmm. chat. So if you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, I will post that in the chat as well. We post all of our webinars. So if people miss them or you want to hear, it, you know, there's so much great content in all of them. You want to go back and hear it again. It's posted for you to see. And um, McFinn also uh, wrote out his whole journey with his experience with ALS on Medium. It's a blog and was fascinating. So go check that out. He's now writing about his advocacy work. So you could catch episodes of that or the whole thing on Medium. Again, I will post where you can go check that out. So, and as McFinn mentioned, our podcast that we're doing, we're super excited. If you know of um, somebody who'd be interested in being on our podcast or you want to be on it to share your story or you're a researcher or um, somebody innovating in the space, we'd love to talk to you because this is really a way to, for, to inspire people, to want to be advocates and to help find a cure. So um, our social media is growing and so is our YouTube channel with 71,000, 71.3 thousand viewers and the watch time is over 13.5 thousand hours. So um, we have a community of over 4,000 people. We're growing, so please share. Um, share our sites, share, we, the more people we can help and the more people we can reach, the better. So um, again, I'll place that all in the chat. So I, I do all the social media and also the webinars. I uh, look for expert speakers. In my past life, I used to work for Microsoft and I used to do all the training, sales training on licensing for all of the Microsoft Salesforce. And now I'm kind of back to my roots organizing webinars. And so we're looking for great speakers, anybody who's an expert on ALS to share with our community. Um, if you know someone or you are interested, please contact us or you can email me directly, lisa at everythingals.org. Yeah, and um, thank you. And um, this is about, you know, how can we best fight together, right? This is, a, this is us working together. And I'm going to just quickly bring up the, um, you know, the dashboard, because I know this, we're very proud of the dashboard. And, um, and um, what Dave said, you know, this is kind of what he was talking about is how you can actually track. Um, go ahead, Dave. I know you're itching to talk about it. Now I can actually see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. I had all the slides up just that it wasn't shared. <laughs> well, it's it's going to be, as you can see, the, the lines are they're, they're hard to see here, but it's going to be on the website and you'll be able to track your, your progress as you go forward and, the, and measure the actual benefit of what you're doing. So you're able to see it in real time instead of wondering, are you, are you, progressing are you getting worse are you getting better is there anything happening is anything working it's right there in in numbers and it's it's a, a way to measure something and you know it, it just feels like we've been measuring ALS in in ca caveman methods I mean we, we've we've progressed so much further in so many ways scientifically and medically and yet with ALS we're still stuck in the in the 1920s or the 1850s or somewhere 
uh, where, where they pull your arm and ask you, you know, can you, can you push down on that? And they try to get some kind of measurement out of that. That's that. so we're just, we're, we're gaining ground here and moving forward and everything LS is leading the charge. And I'm very proud to be associated with it. Thank you, Dave. And a few things that I wanted to add is there's an ability to, for people to put notes saying, you know, they, they have some therapy that they've started and seeing, you know, how, how the things are changing. And also all the data is downloadable. So you can actually click on it and all the data. So this is how we do our research. So any research that we're gonna bring on, you know, where we have breathing uh, and also gait, uh, you know, how people can walk and different, we're looking at four different companies for gait. And, um, you know, we have very exciting research that we're um, bringing up. And with all of the data, one of the things we say is that data has to be available for our participants. So our participants will be able to see that data and look at, you know, how does it apply to you as you're doing other therapies? So with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for hearing us out. And let's open this up to, um, you know, any questions. I know there were a lot of questions. So Sarah, do you want to... Um, um, Kind of moderate questions. Yeah. So um, we actually had a couple questions emailed in. So I, I'm going to mention those first because just so that they get uh, talked about too. Um, so the first question actually has to um, is directed to McFinn and um, what his kind of background is a little bit and um, if he could tell just a bit more of his story. Well, folks, my background is that I worked with the hospice for 18 years. I was in the monastery when I was a young man. Spiritual adventure uh, really pushed me out into the world to see what this world is really about. And finally, it really wanted to show me what it was about. It wanted to sit me down and see what I could do if I was paralyzed. So all I can say is I am a grateful person who has a mission in life. And I didn't know what it was until it came to me. And I wasn't looking for ALS. So just to give a little bit more background, I had some lead poisoning. I, I worked in a janitorial business for 25 years. So I had spray bottles of chemicals all around me. So my environment uh, was polluted. And so I paid the price at 55. And at 55, I got ALS and it took 25 months of my life. Uh, and then I could date my wife again. So I am, like I said, number 42 reversal from Dr. Bedlack. And if you'd like to know anything more about me, you could email me at McFinLevere, iCloud.com. Thank you. And you also have your medium post. Uh, if you could, you've told your story. So I think uh, everyone can check you out there too. Right. Medium, medium.com. Um, McFinn, you, you know, if, if you just type McFinn Levere into Google and press the button, it'll all come up. And put everything in the chat too, even yeah, your medium where the they chat could chat reach you. Awesome. So Thank it's you. all in the chat, McFinn. It's in there if anybody all wants right, to great. It. McFinn, this is Deb here. I just wanted to mention, um, Dr. Bedlack was not responsible for your reversal, correct? He was... No, he was, he was just the one who analyzed my records and said, McFinn, you had ALS and now you don't have it. And so now I am in uh, four research programs. They uh, have my DNA. I had to spit in the little tube so they could study that. And I had to give my blood. I give my blood every four months. And when I pass away within 12 hours, they would like to have my brain and my spinal cord. So I had to get that okayed with my wife. And she finally said, okay. So I am an experiment and I will be experimented on. But until then, I'm yours. And I just wanted to add, um, McFinn was uh, introduced to us and, you know, he was not active in the ALS community through another network of friends. And um, we, we didn't understand when we were going through that, that he had reversed. And then since then he met with Bedlock and, you know, Bedlock um, said, yes, he did have ALS and it's reversed. So that gave us a lot of, you know, that's given us a lot of comfort and also hope, right? Like, so this is 
people like McFinn are reversing. That means this disease can be reversed, can be, um, you know, we, we can get there. So that's what we are very, very passionate about understanding more about this disease. And if you talk to the doctors, the doctors are gonna say, we only know science. Well, there's beyond science. Thank you. So our next question um, is actually to Dave and Andrew asking when the um, data dashboard will be available to people to be able to see. If you have participated in the speed study, yes, uh, the data dashboard is ready to go. We're just trying to do some security login stuff. So it's about a week away. So it's, it's, uh, it's just more connecting and uh, pushing it out to the portal. So you will be, when you log into the portal, you'll be able to see the data dashboard. So we're about a week away. Our uh, next question kind of goes back to discussing Dr. Bedlack. Um, the question has to do with, should there be a collaboration for um, ALS reversals? I will say he has ALS Untangled. Dr. Bedlack puts um, information up there um, as a way for people to look into the research and um, what different reversal cases uh, have done. So that's kind of a good place to look for that information. Um, ALS Untangled is the name of that website. Um, our next question is, uh, do we have working relationships with other leading organizations since as such as, sorry, also IMALS, MDA, and if yes, can you describe? So I will start off quickly and just say, we believe in full collaboration. Everything ALS is determined that we get out of every silo that ALS is already in. And one of those is all these separate pockets. So any way that we can collaborate, we are willing to um, adventure. And I can tell that Indu is ready to answer this question with open ears. <laughs> So, um, you know, our goal is uh, to actually bring in, um, you know, um, very um, novel startups who are actually working on these sensor devices. And we are actually collaborating. Alsa wants to collaborate on um, looking at some of these sensors and grant providing grants for them to actually bring them to ALS because some of these uh, companies have made progress in you know, um, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's and other diseases and we want to bring them into ALA. So yes, they are partnering with us to, um, to actually help them provide them grants. So we're actually in the um, paperwork right now. So they're, they're very eager to do it. Uh, I'm ALS, we have a great uh, relationship with them. It's much more about, you know, uh, projects that we um, talk to. And also I think uh, some of the people like Phil Green and Michael who actually are on working on both organizations. So we have a lot of, you know, cross uh, pollination. Um, MDA is something that we haven't really ventured out. Just, I mean, not that we don't want to, it's just more of time and resources. And if any of you have a better relationship with any of these organizations, please introduce us. And we want to, um, we believe in collaboration, like Sarah said, and we would love for everybody here to help us uh, get to the common goal. Um, can I speak to that as a pals? I know that um, in the ALS community, there's been a lot of frustration with ALSA and with the FDA. And I've just been super impressed with how much effort everything ALS is putting into working with these organizations and trying to collaborate in every way possible. So I just want to uh, underscore what Indu said about the, the working relationship with these organizations. We're we're an open book and we're trying in every way possible to be available to every organization out there and work hand in glove with anyone who's willing to do that. And I'm, I'm very, I'm very impressed and um, supportive of what's happening with ALSA and the, the continued relationship there. And I'm encouraged by that. So good stuff ahead. I also have to give a shout out to ALS Hope Foundation. Jamie comes to every one of these webinars. Yes. They are fabulous that we've hosted webinars with them before too. So they are also one of the leading organizations that we do collaborate with. So I, I do want to make sure that they are. And, and all, as well. I agree. And ALS TDI as well. We're I was going to say that. Uh, uh, Lisa Cross, you mentioned. So our goal is, uh, you know, to combine uh, some of these projects together as they're doing uh, precision medicine program. And um, so, yes, we, we're having a lot of good, uh, uh, you know, reception with other organizations who are coming to us and going, hey, let's collaborate because, you know, we, we've gotten 620 people to the table here in the short amount of time. So that shows that all of you here are, have made a difference in pushing this forward. 
Well, another example of collaboration would be um, there's a clinical trial dashboard with IMALS you're probably all familiar with. And um, they asked me to come work on that and help, even if it just means, because I'm so busy with what I do with everything ALS that I don't have a lot of bandwidth, but even if I help to share stuff on social media with any organization and the work they're doing, I mean, we're always happy to share others' efforts and um, it's not always just about what we're doing. So, um, you know, we're collaborating with Niels and MGH with everything they do. So. Um, we really do try to make it all about the community, um, more so this organization and that. It's like, what information could we help you guys with? So our next question is kind of a, a short one, but it kind of leads into a, a few others. So um, for Harini's question, is the wearable device available now? I'm going to let Neil answer that one, but it'll kind of coincide into our, our question after that. So. Neil, do you want to discuss? Sure, yeah. Happens? Yeah, um, I mean, there are a lot of different devices that are currently in development. And some, some of the companies that are developing those devices uh, we're actively working with. Um, and we're kind of trying to find a balance between um, using say like consumer, uh, like fitness trackers and other things that are super widespread uh, in order to uh, get some data out of those. So talking with companies like Apple, but then there are more, um, I guess, specific solutions for say like tracking motor deterioration. And um, yeah, there are startups in all different areas uh, that are doing things like tracking steps, uh, looking at um, uh, muscle wasting and how, how the body moves differently uh, using accelerometers and gyroscopes attached to the limbs. Um, there are companies with, um, yeah, handheld devices uh, or handheld spirometers um, that can track respiratory status and uh, are very inexpensive, but they're also networked. So uh, a lot of these devices, you could actually use them from, from home. Uh, you don't need to go to the clinic. And that's another thing that uh, we want to try to do is make sure that uh, all of these ways of measuring are easy to do for, uh, for patients. Um, so they have, they have clinical value, but we also need to make sure that um, it's feasible to use them uh, for research. So yeah, some, not, a lot of, not a lot of the devices are currently uh, commercially available, but um, yeah, we're, we're working hard to try to make that happen. And actually that perfectly ties in with the uh, answers to the next question. So it says, describe how diversity among research subjects is achieved. I know, I think there's kind of a two part answer to that. I think first off to say that we have participants from all 50 states in our study. And we also have a wide um, following around the globe that we are looking to expand our studies, you know, to go international in the future. Um, the more data you have, the better. There's, there's nothing to be said about less data. The more data we can get, the better. The more people we can get, the better. And historically, their populations, um, I mean, un unfortunately, white males have a high population of ALS, but that's not the whole ALS population. And so if we can really make cross sections of anybody and everybody, we're going to have more data. We're going to know more knowledge, ultimately getting to more answers. So... Um, the more diversity we can uh, gain, the better. And so that's why we encourage anybody and everybody to join our studies. We need controls, healthy controls. We need asymptomatic car carriers and we need people with ALS as well. Um, so, you know, please consider. The second thing I think is important has to do with our dashboard. So if you are in our speech study, um, this is kind of a tag for our next few, our next couple studies that are in the works at the moment. Um, there are opportunities for others for you to participate in other studies too, which provides more data about you. But also we make sure that we give all that data back. So just like Dave was saying and, and presenting all this great information about that dashboard, he gets all of his information. Well, if he also joins the breathing study that we're currently in the pipeline to, um, to get started and the speaking out loud study, that's more information that he gets to know about his own health, his own body. And that's more data that can be shared um, to find answers. So I think that that kind of, it's, it's a multifactorial answer and, um, and really will help um, 
get the information and get it out of just individual health systems. It's, it's making it bigger and broader, which is really a big part of the way that we're changing the research paradigm. And something, uh, Sarah, just to piggyback off of what you were talking about, something that's really exciting is uh, studies that we can do uh, to figure out um, uh, treatment methods that are non-pharmaceutical. So like the whole point of the Speak Out Loud study is to determine whether speaking more actually keeps uh, ALS patients from losing their voices or, or it would be a slower degradation. And uh, that's the kind of thing where nobody really knows at this point whether that's the case. But if we could find out something like that, um, then potentially people could speak more clearly for longer. Uh, another one would be exercise and the specific effects of, of exercise and different types of exercise on um, muscular deterioration. So we're very excited about some of those studies too, because they could have a big impact on quality of life. Um, John asked if he can join the speech study if he lives in Canada. So, Andrew, do you want to talk about our international? Yeah. So, so um, you know, because it's a data a data platform, we every country has got a different kind of uh, a privacy. So, with Canada, we're working very, very closely with the Ontario Brain Institute right now, and also uh, the Canada group there uh, to open up to Canada soon. So that's something in works and um, we'll announce very, very shortly. So, but if you can actually go to everything ALS.org slash research and put your name in there, we're, we'll have you in the waiting list. And as soon as this opens up, we'll be able to send you um, the information. 